channel, welcome back to the vlog and welcome to a very tight bridge. Oh, there we go. Ah, uh, yeah, welcome back. It's great to be back. I had uh, a nice, refreshing break away doing decorating. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for joining me, my name is Kev. I drive a HGV collecting scrap and end of life vehicles. Uh, today we are, well our first collection is in Sherbourne. It's about an hour away from the yard, so not too bad. And then we've got uh, a couple more up towards Froome. And then back down to Dorchester, where we're collecting three in one place. We switch, we switch back to this view. It's a little bit, it's a little bit bouncy, but um, I think many of you seem to prefer uh, sort of behind my head look, looking out the windscreen. So that's what we're going to go for for now. It's a bit, bit tight, long here. So yeah, fantastic to be back. Behind the wheel again, still in the Scania, which is nice. We've only got six cars today. But the weather's not looking great either. And then we're gonna get wet at some point. And, uh, and many of you ask, keep asking. Uh, I think it must be new subscribers. Keep asking why I, why I have two sat -nabs. I'm going to go into that a little bit later, I'm going to tell you what each one, because they, they both perform different jobs, and I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you what that is a little bit later, when I've got some time, and uh, show you a couple of things on that. I also have uh, news of a job vacancy, if anybody's looking for a job. Uh, what else is there? Fiesta, how are we the Fiesta? Oh, we're servicing the Fiesta at the moment. The engine needs a good service, so um, that'll be the next video that will be out on the Fiesta. Gonna give it a good service and a few other little bits under the bonnet that need doing. Uh, but yeah, it's still going well. The scrap car challenge is uh, successful so far. Just been uh, out driving around, enjoying the little ST. Hi there. I think that's about it. Shut up. I, uh, jeez. I think that's, that, that'll conclude the uh, intro for now. Uh, I'm going to crack on to Sherbourne, pick up our first car, and uh, I shall see you when we get there. Okay, that is car number one collected. Uh, I'll go to our next one now. It's about an hour away. Uh, everything's plumbed into sat nav. Let's go. we go um, so yeah next one we collect from a garage Vauxhall Corsa uh, we had to do a little bit of renegotiating with that one because um, obviously we buy uh, I, excuse the pun but we buy any car <laughs> and uh, doesn't have to be scrap or salvage um, but what we do is uh, we grade the vehicles from like one to five, category one to five. So one being good condition, no bodywork damage, uh, engine runs and drives, no modifications, and uh, everything complete and intact. 
and then you have like category two which is like very good condition engine doesn't run cat three poor condition bodywork engine doesn't run you know and it accident damage and then severe accident damage and um uh, that one and, and, and it's graded um upon what the customer tells us its condition is uh, whereas I got to that one, that was supposed to be a category one, which is runs, good condition, uh, nothing wrong with it, perfectly good car, um, and there was a lot of damage on the back bumper. So, uh, a little bit of renegotiating, took a little bit longer than I'd like to have done, and I had to walk half a mile to go and get it, because there's no chance we were getting down South Street in Sherbourne. Um, so it caused a little bit of havoc parked where we were, but we didn't have any choice and I've not quite learned how to make this truck fly yet, so sometimes we do cause grief. Um, so our next one is Bruton, we're due to be there about 10 o'clock. Uh, it's a garage, so yeah, it should be all good. Hopefully uh, no access issues. Um, I just passed a sign that told me this road was closed, which I'm not that keen on. We're turning off it in seven miles, so hopefully it's not closed before seven miles. <laughs> right, the guys, uh, I shall speak to you shortly, and uh, I'll see you when we get into the garage. Okay, so that is Vauxhall Corsa loaded. That's number two. Uh, suspension up. And break off. I've now got back into it because I've come up to this garage that used to be an old train station. And that, like, this, this is it. And I, I might be able to reverse all the way out if I wanted to, but it backs out onto a main road. But the, uh, the guys from this yard just said that I could back in there, so that's really handy. So I can back into their yard and try and get back out again. Yeah, it's quite a, quite a cool little garage, actually. Next train station. You can see it in front of us now. Should give us enough room to get out there. Splendid. Right, we've now got to go to Froome. This that now is going all to, it's going nuts because uh, Hello, buddy. Saddam lives in the van here again. All right. Yeah, um, look, um, so yeah, my missus is literally, she's just got to pick up my little daughter, which is one minute around the corner, so she'll probably be about five past twelve, ten past twelve. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm probably not looking much different myself. Station road. All right, nice one. Yeah, I've got a few different kids. Yeah, no, that's fine, mate. All right. 
All right, nice one. All right, thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers, bye bye. bye. So yeah, we've got out of there. We're in the, uh, it's like a small little market town of Bruton. It's, Bruton is brutal. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the nicest of towns to drive through. I literally come through a really, really tight area. Um, that sat-nav's that sat taken me out one way, and that sat-nav's taken me out the other way, a different way. I prefer the look of the, that sat-nav, to be honest. That sat now is trying to take me up a tiny little lane. Ah, Froome. A359. So yeah, it's all been made a one-way system, like, because it's just a bit tight to get around. We're picking up a Vauxhall Movano. Hopefully it's not a high top. Because uh, we've got cars to go on underneath it. So yeah, for some reason, the Garmin's trying to take us up there. But Tom Tom looks like it's taking us a more sensible route. Mind you, I say that, but it looks a little bit tight. <laughs> Turn right, A359, Co Road, then turn right. That is tight. There we go. Through. I think the only reason Tom Tom's trying to take me a different way is because this is all Turn right, high street. This is all seven and a half ton, but we're already in the seven and a half ton limit, so it keeps it keeps boring to me that there's seven and a half ton limits. But that's the only problem with Garmin is if you're already in a seven and a half ton limit, it will take you back out the quickest route. When really you don't need to. Keep left. You're already in it and you've made a collection. Tight on that house. You're gonna have to move that thingy with jigger mushy. There we go. Yeah, I'm accepting the seven and a half ton weight limit. See now, it's gonna divert me left off this road now because there's a weight limit on this road and it's uh Silly sat nav. Silly town. Gonna have to use a bit of car a bit. Bit of curbage. Hopefully you don't get much tighter. After 600 feet, keep left. <laughs> yeah, you run DPD, man. <laughs> I'm coming. Oh, that's it. The uh, Garmin has finally picked up on the route that I want to take. The one that uh, the other one has, has told me to go all along. So. One point for the Tom Tom this, on this occasion. It's not very often that happens, mine. Jeez. See, Tom Tom's telling me to go up there. 
I don't want to go up there. And that sign saying 359 Froome this way. So we go this way. Now the Tom Tom's trying to tell me to turn round. Turn around when possible, then take the second left. Shut up, Tom Tom. See, this is uh, this is actually why it's handy. To uh, what height is that bridge? Is that down there? Jeez, I saw an have a panic attack then. Oh, 14 foot earlier so I'm just going to get out and double check everything because that bridge is 39 then uh, we can't go this way <laughs> right I'll be back right now I didn't know what I was thinking I measured myself at 15 foot not 14 foot so there's no chance of us fitting under a 39 bridge <laughs> <laughs> Both sat navs are set to 15 foot, that's why they were trying to take us a different way. Never ignore the sat nav. So we're going to have to turn around and try and find a different route. Because these two are trying to take us up here now and then take us off onto a tiny little lane. But yeah, there is a 13 foot nine bridge up here and there, there ain't no way we're getting around it. So we're gonna have to turn around, go back through the town again. And we need to turn around. Uh, I'm going to turn around in this junction. Put my hazards on so you're not stuck right up my backside. No, nope, you're gonna stay sat right up my backside. There we go. He's backed off. Right. This time we'll follow the sat navs, which will take us out into the horrible, nasty countryside, middle of nowhere tight roads but it's the only way we're going to get to Vroom now so we've got to go shut up sat nav I'm not going back that way again What a palava. Turn left, then turn left. Turn left, then at the end of the road, turn right. Whoa, Tiger, whoa. After 600 feet, turn left, Brewer Road. Going down there, that's a terrible idea, sat nav. 
There's a tiny little track. Okay, we've got to make a right if we can. We've got to try and take this right here if it's not too sharp. If it's sharp, we're going to have to go right the way around the town and back out of the way. Yeah, we're going around that. That's too sharp. So back around the town again, which is fun. Lovely parking. I can't complain because I park like that all the time. <laughs> bridge fiasco, eh? I, I don't like it up round Froome and Shepton Mallet and all round areas. There's all lots of tiny lanes that I don't like. So, oh yeah, it's this little tight bit again. At the end of the road, See guys, this is right, gripping stuff. Gripping turn stuff. Right, then turn right. So, just right again here. Down through the turn right. Down through the town centre. Or the high street. After three hundred feet, turn right, A three fifty nine, High Street. Turn right. Let's say no. That could prove to be problematic. There's a tanker in front of me now, which is making me feel a little bit better. We know we can fit because we've been down here before. Just that there's there's more parked in the way. <laughs> So when we get down to the end of air, we've got to go left. Where well, it was trying to send us before we went round the town again. 
but it was too tight a turn. But coming from this direction, we should be okay. And I know that I can get up it because I come down that way. There's a fire engine now. So we've got to go left, that's the only way, so it's tight, but it's doable. Of there. This is just all really hilly country roads now. But I know that I can get through it. Well, unless I meet another truck, of course, then, then I will be screwed. Thank you. I think if we didn't go this way, it would be a really, really long way around. So it's all good fun, isn't it? You get to see the countryside. It's nice and green, it's not raining, there's pheasants. The car up on top is getting a beating. <laughs> Crash, bang, wallop going on up there. So, the moral of the story is Ignore your sat nav with caution. Because I was ignoring it because it was taking me up tight country lanes. I didn't realise it was the one that I'd come down. <laughs> and uh, definitely keep your eyes out for um, low bridge signs. Uh, there was a low bridge, didn't cause us any problems. As soon as I seen the low bridge sign, I got out, re-measured to confirm. And uh, it's silly really, because I got 15 foot on that sign over there as well, on the interior marker. Um, but yeah, I got out, re-measured, re-confirmed. Nope, won't get under that bridge. Turn around and go a different way. No harm done. Just caused us a little bit of time, but not the end of the world. For some reason, that sat nav is saying we're going to get there at half past 12. That sat nav is saying we're going to get there at five past 12. We'll see which is right when we get there. All right, I'll catch you in a bit, guys. As we're here waiting for the uh, customer to arrive with this Muvano, I thought I'd give you a quick description of why I have two sat navs. Garmin, TomTom. -tom. Don't like navigating on the TomTom. -tom. Much prefer navigating on the Garmin. The problem with the Garmin is it will take you all round the houses to try and avoid a weight limit that you need to go into. Or it will take you on a 50 mile diversion to try and avoid a low bridge when there's a much simpler way around it. Um, so that one is like really, really overprotective. This one just wants you to send it everywhere. Seven and a half weight limit, don't worry about it. Uh, a bridge that's two inches lower than your height limit, send it don't worry you'll be fine <laughs> um, but that's not the reason why i use it this one is all hooked up to the uh, telematics of the truck so as you can see there 
I might have to go a bit closer. As you can see there, it's got all the fuel consumption, gear shifting, green speed, coasting, uh, speeding, idling, all that sort of stuff. Um, idling is poor because I've got to idle to work the hydraulics. Gear shifting is poor because uh, whenever I use the retarder, it knocks it down a gear and it doesn't like it. Fuel consumption is poor because, well, just fuel consumption. And coasting, I'm poor at coasting apparently, but hey ho. Um, and also, so this is all linked to the office. This has got uh, all the tracking on it. It's also where all my jobs come into. Um, so I get all my jobs through this. Uh, so you can see we've got three vehicles to pick up at our next one, which is a Dorchester, Honda CRV, BMW 3 Series, and a Vauxhall Mariva. Um, so what that also does as well is it sends a link to the customer when they can, they can track me and see how far away I am, uh, which is really helpful for me if they're uh, they're ready for me. And uh, like first thing in the morning, it will text them and it will text them when I'm like an hour away from them as well. So all really helpful stuff on the TomTom. -tom. Um, I can't exactly remember what it's called, but it's, uh, what is it? It's like the OptiDrive stuff. So yeah, it's, it's all like, it's, it's all linked to the office. So that's my work sat nav. I don't use that for navigating, even though it looks like I do because it's telling me where to go. It's that, but that's relaying the information like back to the customers and stuff and the office. Uh, that's the one that I use for navigating, even though it's, it's, it's really sensitive. Poor thing. Very, very sensitive. So, uh, so you've got to look after it. Uh, anyway. Hopefully a customer will be here in a minute and uh, we can get this van loaded and get on back. Ready ho, van is loaded. Just got me lunch out ready. Got myself another drink. Uh, suspension's up, PTO's off. Let's go. Hour and 45 minutes now down to Dorchester where we're gonna pick up three more. Our ETA is going to be about quarter to three. Luckily, it's only an hour away from the, the yard, so like, say I'm there for an hour loading the three vehicles, then hour back to the yard, five o'clock, hopefully. We've got to go through Froome. I'm surprised my, the Garmin isn't trying to take me a different way because we've got to go through a seven and a half ton weight limit, but. That's the snowflake sat nav. <laughs> hey. And we're off. Yeah, you get back. So yeah, hopefully we're down there for about three o'clock. It's later than I wanted to, but we've waited 45 minutes for that customer. And, uh, 
And then we had all the diversions trying to get around the bridge and all that flapping around. Put, put us behind a little bit, but not to worry. It is what it is. Hi then, guys. As we are on our hour and a half journey back down to Ye Dorset, um, so I wanted to tell you about an opportunity that we have with Trents. Um, so, if you've got a Class 1 license and you live local to Trents, you're looking for some HGV work, then we have the perfect opportunity for you. <laughs> uh, we are looking for someone to uh, drive our curtain cider. Um, just trunking pretty much, trunking to and from uh, Paul to Rugby every day and uh, yeah it's nice easy steady job you know you start as early as you want finish as early as you want pretty much um, I think the current driver we got there at the moment doing it who's covering starts at like four o'clock usually back in the yard by 12 midday um, and then he'll do a short run over to Holton Heath which is like 15 minutes each way do a trailer swap bring it back again it's usually done by one o'clock uh, and uh, so yeah it's, uh, it's, a, it's a steady easy 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 job so yeah if you've got your class one and uh, you want to do some easy curtain side of work there's a, a position we have available at Trent's he's driving a one-year-old MAN it's a very nice truck really really nice it's uh, been kept absolutely spotless it's got all the built-in sat nav and all the bits and pieces and, but yeah it's a nice truck and uh, so yeah if you uh, if you're interested or you want to have a chat or uh, whatever then uh, I'll leave the link in the description and uh, that will take you to uh, the Charles Trent's website and uh, if you apply for the job then tell them that I sent you Wow 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 Ugh. PTO off we've just loaded our three cars um, unfortunately I couldn't film it because the uh, the customers were out so I couldn't film unfortunately but we've got some good footage today the annoying thing about this one was I've had to unload the van that we loaded so I could put it on the spec um, yeah it's a bit, we're a bit big with a, uh, a long wheelbase high top van on the uh, on the back but so be it because with the van on the top where we had it I couldn't get a car underneath otherwise it would have been well over 16 foot and we wouldn't have been able to get under the bridges on the way back so uh, we had to unload the van put a Honda CRV in its place and then put a BMW and a Vauxhall Mariva on the lower deck and then spec the van where are you going? are you coming in here? little bit of curb there it's a bit tight getting out of there so yeah we're just under 16 foot now so we can get under the bridges and all the uh, telephone cables and everything else so we're all right there fingers crossed the van stays on Just going to take it nice and easy on the way back. Because uh, I'm not keen on having big old vehicles on the spec. <laughs> okay, exhaust brake slowing us down for this bumpy level crossing.
hear the screeching from the van tires hitting the uh, grounding out. What I want to do as soon as I get a chance is to pull over and uh, check the uh, straps on that van, but um, there won't be anywhere to pull over for a little while, so just take it easy, nice and steady. On the way, we're half an hour away from the yard, due to get back there at half past four, so eh, not too bad a day today. It's been a bit fiddly and a bit annoying at times, but apart from that, it's been all good. Right then, uh, I'm going to move you on back to the yard and uh, I shall catch you when we get back. Right, that is us all unloaded. Um, before we go, uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to Ross who uh, bought me this. Now this delivered to Trent's for me. Uh, it's a wicked thermal cup. Brilliant, really, really good. So thank you so much for that, Ross. Really, really appreciate it. I use it every day. Um, keeps my coffees hot for ages. And it's real good quality as well. So thanks, mate, much appreciated. Um, I spotted something. I spotted a new truck when we come in. So uh, let's go and have a little look at that. Check this out. Now this is the combination that goes on the trunk and run that we are hiring for. Uh, it's not this unit, unfortunately. Ours is in for service, so we've got this one. Tidy. Next gen. It's got all the uh, bits and pieces in it. High spec. Yeah, not bad for a courtesy truck, eh? Whilst ours being serviced. So if you become uh, our new driver, then uh, you get this for once a week, every six weeks or whenever it is. <laughs> But yeah, this is the uh, this is the curtain side of truck that gets used to do the uh, the rugby run, and there's the Scania, all nicely unloaded. Just got to park it up. Oh, at least the sun's out. It's been a busy old day today. Everyone's gone home. You can see the uh, see the yard. Everyone's got a trailer full of alloy wheels. So there we go guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget that for the uh, class one job I will leave a link in the description. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.